Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna go over a quick little tip that'll help you save a little bit of time using the expression point control. So let's check it out. All right, so this tutorial is gonna use the point control expression control. And we're gonna use that to control the position of some of these elements that actually have positions and things animated. So I could move them around really quickly without having to modify their animation. And before we get started, I know that you can use parents to do this, but I used this technique to make presets and presets can't have parents. All right, so let's check that out. Let's go in this point control comp and we're gonna look at this try hard triangle right here. So you can see I have a cleverly named hit point control over here. And then we have a simple expression on position. So let's open that up. You can see we're just setting a variable called HP equal to that point which is gonna give us an array. And an array basically just means that we have multiple values. We have an X and a Y. Position itself is also an array. So in the next line, all we do is we take value zero, which is the first or X position of the array. And then we're gonna add it to the X position of the HP array. So you write out value bracket zero, close bracket, plus HP open bracket zero, close bracket. And then we do the same thing for the Y positions. So it's value one plus HP one. And that's all there is for that. So like I said, it's pretty simple. So if you notice, we actually have our position keyframes up here in this corner. Let me move this down. So those arrows slide in from the beginning, go here, slow down, and that's it. So let's move back over here. I didn't really need to see those position keyframes, so I didn't care that they started at zero. But we can also do it with an offset, so let me show you how to do that. So this is going to take a little bit of setup. So let's click on the swipe line, and I've already added the point control. So I'm going to check this thing's position, and you can see it's set to like a different value. So ultimately, this is where I'd like the new control to end up at. So I'm going to put these values in this point control. So it's 1298, 586. So 1298, 586. And now we're going to set this to the middle of the comp. So it's going to be 960, 540. I just drew this line in wherever, but it actually fits. But if yours doesn't, you can take your actual line and move it until it's in the center of the comp. But since mine's already there, we'll leave it as is. So you're going to see there's kind of a problem. If I add this number to this number, this thing is gonna go way over here. So there's actually a pretty simple fix for that. We're gonna option click over here on position. I'm gonna type in HP equals, and then I'm gonna pick whip our point control over here and put a semicolon. I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna put HP equals HP minus open bracket 960 comma 540. Close the bracket, put another semicolon. So what we're doing there is we're actually subtracting an array from an array. So our first position is normally 1298. We're going to subtract 960 from that. And our second position is 586. And we're going to subtract 540 from that. So what we're doing is getting the offset from the center of the comp. So then we're going to go down here and we're going to go position plus HP, semicolon, enter. And now you can see that our values are 1298, 586, putting it right back where we were before. But now we can actually move it around with this. And then our line will actually be where the anchor point is. So if it's something like a shape with a line and you want to know where that line's going to go, now you know. So I'm going to undo that. And that's pretty much it. That's extra useful for things like lines in a shape layer because it's not really easy to move it unless you click this exact point. If you click over here, it deselects and selects something else. But now you can just click over here and move it to your point. Or if you know exactly where you want it to go, you can just type it in. And I realized that for this line, you could actually just go over here and animate the position. But if you have this thing animating in some other fashion on position, this will let you move it without having to modify that or make sure that you have both keys selected or whatever. Just in case you have any questions, I'm going to explain how the rest of this is built real quick. So basically I have my layers that have the strokes on them under the layers that have the full text. These two slice lines come in and I have a matte layer up top and everything under these things are controlled with set matte, just like in tutorial 62, slice like a ninja. I drew these matte shapes in real quick on the same layer that correspond with the lines. And in each of their groups, I made a left and a right so I knew which one was which. I went into this group's contents. I went down to the transform. I option clicked on the position. And I pick whipped the slice down here that corresponded to the one that I wanted it to follow. And I just put it in dot position. Or you can pick whip the position directly if you have that open. So then I knew this would follow. But of course everything is offset based on where you started drawing. So all I did was grabbed all the points and moved them back to where the line was. So now when that moves, you can see that these boxes follow them. So then it's up to just however you use set map. The only other thing is there's a gap in here and I have basically an offset path set at the very beginning when it slices open. You can kind of see it there. And I just have it basically expand these paths until it closes this gap. And then for like three frames, it opens up. And that's pretty much how that's done. So that's it. I hope you guys can use this to help speed up your work. 
you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you want to help support Workbench, consider checking out patreon.com slash workbench. And as always, make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.